Hey YouTube, so I am back. I'm on a roll with these reviews, yeah. Anywho, I'm back with a review slash recap of If Loving You Was Wrong, Season 3, Episode 8, titled Dark Intentions. Okay, and this episode was probably titled Dark Intentions because Randall was in a, a good amount of the scenes in this episode and he is dark as it is. But whatever the case, you know what? Let's just pick up where we left off. Wait, did this episode give me everything I needed? Not everything, but you know, a good 80%. I'll take it. You know, whatever. Everything can't be the episode last week. If you haven't caught it, go back and watch that review. Anywho, let's get started. So the episode starts off where it left off with Natalie and Lucian talking like Lucian is basically warning her, look, the numbers came back on that on that gun and that gun was stolen. Natalie is like, what? Oh my gosh, it's stolen? I can't believe my gun lady uh, really played me like that. And then um, he was like, no, but that's not the worst of it. She's like, that's not the worst of it. That's bad enough. He's like, no. That gun was stolen from Ramsey two months ago. And she's like, well, oh my goodness. I mean, ain't this a small town? So, you know, I personally feel like Travis, like, intercepted this sale at some point and, like, like forced the lady to sell her that gun. I don't know, because Travis can't be connected to everybody in the town. But whatever the case. So, they try to call the gun lady. Of course, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm sorry, but you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you want to try this number again, don't waste your time because it was set up to be disconnected. So, of course, now like Natalie is freaking out because not only is this bad news for Kelly and Kelly needs to get to her lawyer ASAP, this is horrible news for Natalie because Natalie's the one that gave her the contact information to get the gun. So, you know, whatever the case. They're just like, okay, we're going to go over there. We're going to talk to Kelly. This is not good for her. Okay, we need to get her to tell us the whole story. It's not going to be good for her because it's going to look like she stole it from him months in advance to protect herself. Or so that he would be unable to protect himself. Okay, whatever the case. So Lucian and Natalie, they head over to Kelly's house. Lo and behold, who's that snooping in the bushes? Uh-oh, Travis. And he's just, you know, I thought as sneaky as you be, you didn't see two people, two people walking from this house to the house next door, like in broad daylight. Like you got caught, you slipping, bruh. So whatever, Lucian's like, what you doing over here? Travis is like, oh, you know, you know, just checking on her. No, what you doing over here? You got a restraining order on her. You know you ain't supposed to be over here. Oh, you know, she just wanted me to stop by. Dude, we know she didn't want you to stop by. Like, what are you doing over here? He's like, she wanted me to stop by. Okay, so cool. So they decide um, they're going back and forth, okay? So Lucian is like, you know what, cool. I'm going to go knock on Kelly's door, and I'm going to go ask her, you know, if this is even true. So she knocks on, he knocks on the door. Kelly, like, barely opens up the door. She's like, did you ask him to come over? And Kelly's like, of course I didn't. And he's like, Kelly, why you lying on me, man? Like, y'all, I'm so sick of this craziness with Travis. Like, I just need something to happen. Like, I'm tired of him getting over on people. And I don't even want to waste my breath on his part, to be honest. All in all, Lucia ended up checking the perimeters of the house. He put um, Travis in the car. Travis was, like, laughing at Kelly, taunting her. Kelly is dumb as a box of rocks. So Kelly decides to go out there and try to talk all big and bad to him as if she's going to intimidate him. Like, dude, like, you almost died. Like, he almost choked you out. Like, shut up. Like, just, just, just stay far away from it because you're not helping your case, okay? You're playing into his games. Whatever the case, Lucian decides he had him in handcuffs real tight, took him into the station. And I was like, thank goodness, but we all know that he ain't staying at the station. Okay, so... Anywho, oh, and at one point he says, like, do you know who my parents are? And I'm like, this is what he says to Lucia. I'm like, Travis, dude, like, ain't you, like, 30-something? Like, get a life. Like, stop going off your mother and father's name. Like, make a name for yourself. But anywho, uh, da -da -da -da, he was like, you're going... Um, 
Oh, at one point he was taunting Kelly and was like, you're going to jail for the rest of your life. You messed with the wrong guy. You led me on. You ignored me. She was like, you killed Ramsey, then you called justice. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's his key phrase. I don't know what you're talking about. You ain't saying nothing yet. Give me your best shot. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then we get to Steven. Steven is sprung. I mean, super sprung. Like, he didn't even get the whole cookie jar. Like, he got, like, a nibble of a cookie, and now all of a sudden, like, he is, like, the cookie monster, like, waiting outside of Esperanza's door. So she's slick trying to play hard to get. Like, she don't like all the attention from him. And he is, like, bold about it. Like, no, I came back for more. We need to start what we, we need to finish what we started. She's like, boy, bye. I'm not doing that. And I'm like... Come on, y'all. Like, y'all are adults. Either just do it because y'all already started doing it anyway. Or just tell them the truth. Like, I don't want to take this chance because Eddie is my baby's daddy and he's crazy. And I don't feel like dealing with that drama. So, nothing you can tell me is going to convince me otherwise. I'd rather not have that than to have to chance dealing with Eddie. She should just say that because that's the real truth. Whatever the case, Mr. Sprung ends up leaving. Okay. Um, uh, oh, the important part about it is at one point Esperanza asked her, asked him questions about her, like, what's my favorite color? Like, what things do I like to eat? Whatever. He's been paying attention to her and watching her closely in the office for years now. So he's been able to, he was able to answer all those questions. So he's genuinely like interested in her, not just her body. Okay. So that was good. Okay. So. Um, Natalie, we goes back to Natalie. Um, Natalie ends up going over to Kelly's house by herself once Lucian and Crazo is gone. And to tell Kelly about the gun. Um, give her all the details. Of course, like, Kelly is freaking out. She's like, I don't know what to do. I can't believe you did this to me. You put me in this position, all this and that. And I'm like, girl, no, you was messing with, like, um, the leading star of a thin line between love and hate, too. So, you put yourself into it. If you would have never gotten involved with Travis, you wouldn't be in all this mess. But, anywho. So, she's like, um, you know what? She's freaking out. She tries to get her calm down. Y'all know that they just get on my nerves. They're both dramatic. But, anyways, next thing you know, Marcy and Ian, we see them at dinner. Ian says it's a celebratory dinner, but then, um, at some point, he confesses that he likes Marcy, he's really interested in her, keeps trying to get her to drink. She's like, no, I'm just going to drink water. And he's, um, she's like, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. And he's like, why wouldn't you be interested? And she's like, I'm just not, that's not my focus right now. I.e., I'm pregnant and I'm trying to get through this divorce. And I really want Brad, but he doesn't want me. He wants his wife, all this stuff. Um, but she says that she's bothered by Randall and all that. Um, Ian suggests that she sue Randall just to scare him off. He even admits it won't. It won't, um, if she sues him, it won't go through, but hey, let's just scare him a little bit. Um, then his phone rings. Um, so, um, they're trying to see where Larry is, the other lawyer, and I believe that that is uh, Randall's friend. Um, but basically, Ian's going to have to run off because some rich kid is in trouble. He needs to go down to the station and get him. He's always tied up with his family, busy with them. So at this point, we don't know who the rich kid is. We find out later on in the episode. Okay, so then we get to Lucian. Lucian takes Travis in the, into the station. He's taunting him. Like, you're going down. You're going down for real this time. I mean, Lucian just be talking himself in circles. Like, stop threatening people until you know that you know that you know that they don't have anybody to dig them out of these holes, okay? So whatever the case, he brings Travis into the station. So Eddie comes in pissed off at Steven, like pissed off to the highest level of festivity, and he is telling Lucian, like, I'm gonna get him, you better tell him stop messing with Esperanza, I put my mark on her, once she done been with me once, twice, especially had a baby by me, then she's mine, I don't care if we're not together, he's not gonna be with her, he's like, dude, like, just get out of my face, like, um, and he's like, no, you already know I ain't going nowhere, we both working undercover here, so you need to get your friend before he comes up missing again. Okay, so basically he's just warning him. Then Lucian is like, oh, speak of the devil. Steven's here. Why don't you tell him yourself? And then, of course, he goes, Eddie goes back and forth with Steven like, yeah, you better watch your bag, bruh. Sleep with one eye open. Stay away from her, whatever. I put my mark on her, whatever. 
They leave out. Okay, so then Lucian starts questioning Travis, like interrogating him. Really kind of trying to get him riled up to get him to crack or break at some point. But once Travis gets to the point where he can't answer questions, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. That's his key phrase. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm getting lost as to where I am. Oh, at one point Travis says, like, we're a team and Officer Dion knows, referencing, like, Travis and Kelly. And I'm like, they're not a team, but, you know, Travis is a little crazy. Um, and, of course, he's had to give a statement to, like, Officer Dion, so whatever. Um, after Lucian continues to start irritating him on purpose and basically trying to throw like Kelly and Ramsey's relationship into his face to get him to crack, then all of a sudden we see Ian shows up to bail out Donovan. And I'm like, Donovan? Who is Donovan? And even Lucian was like, Donovan, you mean Travis? He's like, oh, that's Travis. And I'm thinking, Bruh, does, does Travis have a twin brother or something? Like, why would he automatically look at Travis and think that Travis is Donovan? If he got a twin brother and that is this mix to this story, and sometimes we've been seeing Donovan thinking we've been seeing Travis, what if Donovan is working on Travis's behalf because Travis is, like, butthurt and Travis really do be with his girlfriend and Donovan is just trying to do the dirty work for his brother or Donovan is really, like, the crazy twin? Like, wouldn't that be crazy? Like, and if that's not the case, they should should get me in the writer's room okay because they need ideas like mine but whatever the case um he's like okay no that's not donovan that's travis lucian is like dude ian like that's the guy that's been harassing kelly and ian was like oh plain and simple it's unfortunate but i'm gonna have to drop kelly and so um lucian is like bro you can't do that like i need you to represent her he's like look this kid, he gets in trouble all the time. We always have to bail him out of trouble. But do you know how much money that his church and his firm, well, and his parents, like, we represent all of them. Do you know how much money they put into our firm? Like, I can't afford to do that, okay? I have mouths to feed. I'm buying a new house. I'm trying to kick it with Marcy. I got to be taking girls to dinner and stuff. I ain't got time to be losing this change because of Kelly. And all of the facts are against her at this point. All the evidence. So, whatever the case, he's like, sorry, my hands are tied. I got to drop her. So, dang, that puts Kelly in a bad position again. So, right now, it does look like she's going to jail for the rest of her life. Anyways, Travis goes free. Um, and then Lucian has Steven, tells him to go and look up Donovan Kane to see what's going on with him. Okay, so then we get to Brad and Alex sitting in their house watching TV. some point, Brad gets up to clean up some mess, notices the camera right there, notices that this is the camera that Randall was hanging on his house, and it's still recording. Um, there's some type of, like, backup battery or something. So he's like, freak. They're freaking out. Like, did he hear everything we said? Like, maybe he wasn't by his phone. I'm sure if he heard it, he would have been over here by now. Luckily, um, Randall was drunk, but that doesn't mean that he can't, like, rewind and look at that footage, like, and see what was discussed in that time period. So, for their sake, let's, and the doctor's sake, let's hope not. Okay, so next thing you know, Eddie's knocking on the door. Um, Brad goes to answer the door. Eddie, like, comes in again, pissed off to the highest level of festivity at Esperanza. And then, so, Brad doesn't want all that ruckus in his house, so he pushes Eddie outside. They talk about it outside. He was like, dude, I got to get rid of him. You got to help me get rid of him. You help me get rid of... Um, Steven, I will help you get rid of Randall. And it like Brad is like, you sound crazy. First of all, Esperanza is single. She's single. Let her go. He was like, she's not single, okay? Once you've been with me, you are mine. Whether I claim you or I'm faithful to you or not, you are mine. He cannot put his paws on her. So Brad is like, dude, you sound crazy. I can't help you. You gotta go. Whatever. You sound nuts. Okay, so, um, oh, Eddie, he wanted Steve, he wanted Brad to put a hit on Steven. That's when Brad was like, you tripping, bro. I'm not doing that. Okay, so, um, um, when, oh, Brad ends up destroying that camera that was inside of his house. Okay, so, then we get Larry and Randall. Larry and Randall, remember, same night, they're st stumbling into Randall's house drunk, even decide to go and take another shot. And I'm like, dude, like, y'all must have the highest tolerance level because y'all still drinking and y'all, like, are barely, like, walking straight. 
whatever. They get another drink. Then they start reminiscing about old times in college and when they were roommates and like how many girls they would be with at a time and just handle all of them all at once. Then what's his face? Um, I think his name is is Larry. Um, Larry even brings up, remember that one time where there were no girls and it was just us? And Randall's like, yeah. So, and I figured that happened. Like, I wasn't too shocked, um, but I figured that happened. So I was waiting for him to say that. Either way, he was like, yeah, but I'm not drunk enough to ever do that again. And I think that that's what Larry was hoping for. Whatever the case, Randall was like, well, I heard that. That wasn't a one-time thing for you. You kind of continued dibbling and dabbling in that. And he was like, no, that's not true. Whatever, it is true. So, whatever the case, um, they're still taking shots. Da, da, da. Um, Ian is saying he doesn't swing that way. Then all of a sudden, the conversation gets on Alex. And then he was like, why won't you just let that girl go? He was like, I'm not letting her go. I'm not letting Marcy go. That's why I'm not signing these divorce papers. And I'm going to continue to make um, Alex's life and her husband's life just like literally hell on earth. Because I can't deal with it. Like, they have humiliated me. I'm going to make them suffer, okay? Okay. Brad had sex with my wife in my barn. You know, the same barn that I had sex with his wife in. But it was disrespectful because that's my barn, okay? You don't do that, okay? They wanted to hurt me, so I'm going to hurt them. Of course, he's, like, delusional because he literally did the same thing. But whatever the case, he's like, dude, you got to get up off of it. Like, don't you think they've suffered enough? And he's like, no, they haven't suffered enough. He's like, with all that Marcy's going through, and then you guys is divorced, and then she's pregnant. And Randall's like, come again. She's what? He was like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that. I'm like, you trying, you coming over here getting drunk, trying to help Marcy out and by like, you know, getting Randall comfortable and you didn't put Marcy in a worse position because now Marcy knows that uh, Brad is, um, uh, well, now Randall knows Brad is fixed, but he will still freak out and think it's Brad's baby for a second. And then Brad will have to admit that it's not to save his marriage. But then on the flip side, he'll know like, oh, well, either you've been with these other dudes that he's going to start driving Marcy crazy or he's going to be like, that's my baby. I already know it's my baby. So the saga continues. Um, decent episode. I'm looking forward to next week's episode. I hope it has a lot of fireworks because answers have come out. So at this point, the gloves are off and let's go into the ring and let's get it started. Okay. So anywho, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out at mrsblogaholic.com. Bye.